Lesson five, the Bible. What is the Bible? Christians find that one of the great ways of developing their discipleship is the practice of daily Bible reading and prayer. Here are a few facts. The Bible consists of two parts, which Christians refer to as the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is much longer, nearly a thousand pages in the average printing, against the New Testament's uh, 300 pages. The Old Testament came into existence over a period of more than a millennium, the New within less than a century. The word testament is a translation of the word which also means covenant. It's a central Christian claim that the events concerning Jesus were the means by which, in fulfillment of ancient Israelite prophecy, the Creator God, Israel's God, renewed the covenant with Israel and thereby rescued the world. The Bible is a collection of 66 books written by some 40 different authors in three languages over a period of more than a thousand years. It contains a wide variety of literary genres, yet it has an amazing unity of outlook and purpose. This is because it is uniquely a God-breathed book, designed to give the truth about God to people of all ages. It is not primarily a history book or a textbook or a handbook of ethics, though it contains elements of all three. It has a single main theme, God's entrance into our world to rescue us from our sin and self-centeredness. In a word, we are saying by calling the Bible authoritative is that the Bible somehow becomes an authoritative instrument of God accomplished through Jesus, particularly through his death and resurrection. In other words, for Jesus' death to have the effect it was intended to have, it must be communicated to the world through the word of the gospel, a proclamation of Jesus' lordship. Why read the Bible? God does indeed speak through Scripture, both to the church and, God willing, through the church to the world. Reading the Bible is one of the means by which the life of heaven and the life of earth interlock. We read scripture in order to hear God addressing us, us here and now, today. Listening to God's voice in scripture doesn't put us in the position of having infallible opinions. It puts us where it put Jesus himself, in possession of a vocation, whether for a lifetime or for the next minute. Vocations are fragile and are tested in performance. This is what it's like to live at the intersection of heaven and earth. See what it claims to do for us. It is a mirror. It shows us what we are like. It is a sword to be used in temptation. It is a hammer to break us down. It is as sweet as honey, nourishing as milk or meat, and it can cleanse us, guide us, give us peace and wisdom. No wonder we cannot grow without it. It is a prime way of keeping in touch with the Lord. How do I read the scriptures? Get a Bible you can value. A modern translation is probably best. Get some Bible reading notes to help you. Daily bread are daily notes. Later, branch out on character studies, word studies, studies of great themes or of a whole book, but keep it regular. Apply it to yourself. Look for a promise to claim, a command to obey, new light to rejoice in, 
a warning to heed, a prayer to use, and to our example to follow. Ask yourself, what did this mean to the original recipients, and how does it apply to me? And then turn what you have found into prayer and thanksgiving. Here's the verse to learn and memorize in this lesson. Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and light for my path. The Bible passage for study is Acts 8, 26 through 40. The following questions will aid you in your study. Number one, what was the traveler doing as he rode along? Why did he need help? Number two, how did Philip uh, help him? What might be the modern equivalent of the help Philip offered? Number three, what effect did this dawning understanding of God's truth have on the Ethiopian's life? Number four, what effect should a fresh understanding of the Bible have on us as we expose ourselves to it? And number five, where does the Holy Spirit come into all of this? Here are some books to add to your growing bookshelf. William Barclay, Introducing the Bible. Hawkey and Toon, NIV Bible Study Guide. Paul Little, Know What, Why You Believe. John Stout, Understanding the Bible. And Daily Bread and Daily Notes, notes Bible Reading Notes. Before we finish this lesson, let me add you create some daily quiet times. Turn to God. Find a quiet place and time when you can be alone and then set aside the business and distractions of the day in order to focus your mind on God, His truth, and His goodness. Remember that He loves you and wants to communicate with you and that He is not trying to make the whole thing difficult. He is with you and only wants to see you open yourself to Him. So turn to God and then turn to the Bible. Using the Bible, open the Bible at the passage for the day. Read it through carefully, preferably twice, once to get the feel of it, and once more carefully to pick up the details. Ask yourself what new truths this passage teaches you, and what particular relevance it has to your own life. See if there is a promise, a warning, an example, a prayer you could use. Without spending too much time, jot down in a notebook the main tools and lessons that have struck you from the passage as you think about it and mull it over. Remember also to turn to prayer. Remember, this is a conversation with a friend. Turn your heart to God and silently or out loud, talk over with him the scripture passage you have been studying, thanking him for new light and praying for help to implement any suggestions for your daily life that you may have received. Then you can turn to other needs, personal matters, family, friends, work, the needs of the church, and other issues on your mind. This may not take long to begin with, but the list of people you care about is likely to grow, so you may need a separate page or two in your notebook to jot down people you don't want to forget to pray for. And finally, turn to the day, choose from the Bible passage a new few words you have found helpful and take them with you into the day. You may find yourself returning to them as the day wears on, and that will lift your eyes to the Lord. 